Hello and welcome. I'm Asavri Jindal and you're watching News X Deep Dive. In India's, India's indigenous fighter jet program just hit a major milestone. The Tejas MK-1A light combat aircraft has successfully completed its maiden flight, marking a new era in homegrown air power. What you're seeing in this image is the fighter jet fresh off the tarmac, flanked by officials and capturing a moment of pride and progress. Now, during the ceremony, the Tejas MK-1A HGT-40 and SU-30 MKI performed a flypass signif signifying India's growing aerospace power. The maiden flight of the Tejas MK-1A took place from the Hindustan Aeronautics Limited's Nashik facility. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh was present for the landmark moment, which also saw the inauguration of HAL's third Tejas MK-1A production line and the second line of the HTT-40 trainer aircraft. With the new Nashik line operational, HAL can now roll out up to 24 Tejas jets per year. The flight jet also got a water cannon salute after its maiden test flight today. Now coming to the specifications of the jet, the HAL Tejas MK-1A is India's latest 4.5 generation multi-role lighter combat aircraft designed and manufactured by Hindustan Aeronautics Limited. It is powered by the JEF-404 IN-20 turbofan engine and can reach speeds of up to match 1.8 with a combat range of approximately 3,000 kilometers when equipped with external fuel tanks. The MK-1A variant features a state-of-the-art ASA, which is Active Electronically Scanned Array Radar, a fully digital glass cockpit and an advanced mission computer. It is equipped with an indigenous electronic warfare suit that includes a self-protection jammer, radar warning receiver and countermeasure dispensers. The aircraft supports a wide range of weaponry including Astra missiles, close combat missiles, laser guided bombs and anti-ship missiles with a total payload capacity of 5,300 kilograms. The Tejas MK-1A is also capable of mid-air refueling. With over 75% of its components sourced domestically, the Tejas MK-1A is a symbol of India's push for Atmanir Bharta in defence manufacturing. Now let's talk about the engine. The JEF-404 IN-20 is a powerful jet engine made by General Electric, specially adapted for India's Tejas aircraft. It helps the jet fly fast, climb quickly and perform sharp maneuvers during combat. The engine produces strong thrust about 9,000 kilograms when using afterburners which gives the Tejas its high speed of over 2,200 kilometers per hour. This engine uses a digital control system called FADEC which helps manage fuel and performance automatically, making flying smoother and safer. It's also built to be easy to maintain with parts that can be replaced quickly. Though it's based on the engine used in American FA-18 jets, the IN-20 version is customized for Tejas and assembled in India with the support from HAL. The Tejas program has come a long way it began in 1983 when India decided to build its own fighter jet to replace the MiG-21. Over the years, engineers faced many ups and downs. The aircraft finally flew from, for the first time in 2001. In 2003, Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee gave it the name Tejas, which means brilliance. After more testing and improvements, it was cleared for basic use in 2011 and declared fully ready for combat in 2015. The Indian Air Force got its first Tejas jets in 2016. In 2020, the government placed a major order for 83 upgraded MK-1A versions. To speed up deliveries, HAL added more production lines, including the new one in Nashik, which has now delivered its first jet. 
what does this truly mean? Well, with us on the broadcast is Air Vice Marshal O.P. Tiwari, former Indian Air Force officer. Thank you so much, sir, for taking out time and speaking to us on NewsX. It's a big day for India's military might. Now, of course, I've given out the specifications and the details, but could you help us understand how the Tejas will help India's air prowess? So this uh, Tejas is a very important aircraft for Indian Air Force as such. So you have covered everything in detail. I'll just cover a few things. It's a nearly a 4.5 generation and just short of fifth generation. That is fifth generation means key. it is a difference between 4.5 and 5 is that it is the stealth and hypersonic and the AI incorporated uh, radar, uh, electronic warfare, equipment distribution, equipment delivery, everything has to be by supercomputer on this thing. So supercomputer and flight control system FDS you're talking about that is already there means equivalent to fifth generation. Hypersonic, we don't require a hypersonic flight for the Pakistan or the China. So it is as good as for Indian requirement is concerned, it is fifth generation. Now that these days uh, war pattern has changed, the aircrafts did not cross the border and don't have to go deep inside the enemy, ter enemy territory. Therefore, the stealth requirement is also not there. So this uh, Tejas aircraft, 18 spawns which are supposed to be equipped, it is going to serve us for a very long time. Plus, now any advancement in the electronic warfare suit, electronic jamming, any advancement in the missiles and the rocket and the weapon system, that can be easily incorporated onto this platform. Because this is manufactured by us, designed by us, that is the major advantage you will have. This aircraft may fly for a 10 years or 15 years, but at the same time, the advancement into the technology and the weapon manufacturing will continue and this will be supplemented and the platform, Tejas platform will be such that it can be incorporated and can take out all the modifications and it will be very effective use for the Indian Air Force for the, both the borders. Tejas is the lightest subsonic jet. It reminds me of the next. Net was again the very light aircraft and it performed terribly, but it performed excellently in the 1971 war. So, we are looking forward to the Tejas Mark 1 and Mark 2 will become slightly heavier with a better engine that is 120 kiloton we are talking about. So, it will better performance and these are going to fill the gap what has been created and Air Force will have the full strength and it will be safe. It will be well within the capabilities of Indian Air Force to to uh, secure it for the western border, northern border and also it will deep inside to the ocean if somebody somewhere we have to go because this is got capability of in-flight in -flight refueling also. So Mark Tejas 1 is going to bring a change into Indian Air Force. What you have been looking for? Little bit of history I will tell you. See this started in 1981 as you said. Now the first flight took off when the George Brandis was a defense minister and it pushed HAL and the government and the aeronautic development agency to push this aircraft and aircraft did the first flight. See the in any program or any program to be developed at a retired at a desired rate, we require a support from the government and also the engineers and so that to harness their capabilities and bring back the aircraft. See after 1981, 2001, uh, two you said, two, uh, two I think the first flight took place. Now yes. the spawn, two spawns have been equipped. Now the rate, we got slightly slowed down because G, the, the supplying the engine for us, that delayed by one year. The moment the engine start coming up, the GR company is also under pressure. The moment the more manufacturing engines start coming up, HL is all ready. HL and ADA, aeronautic development authority are ready with the entire infrastructure, avionics, radars, all the weapons, everything ready except the engine. So it will be moved and uh, manufactured at a very faster rate and we are Indian Air Force will not have to wait for any longer duration to make it up for the spawns which has been lost over a period of time that is from 42 to 31. Now we will build it up and it will become a strength. Moreover, this Tejas is so good and has showed it will also be designed. Demand for Tejas will also be uh, uh, increased tremendously in the international market. It will not only fulfill our requirement but it will also generate lot of revenue for the Indian government. And that is a big thing. Like still now, so far, we have been spending money in the buying the equipment. Mm -hmm. Now, thereafter, later on, we will be selling these aircrafts to get more revenue and progress our country. It is a very, very positive steps. Thereafter, that is everything has been lined up. Now, after Tejas Mark 1, Mark 2, then Amka is also lined up. And we may have in 2030, 
एडवांस मीडियम कॉम्बेट एयरक्राफ्ट विल ऑल्सो बी मैनुफेक्चर्ड एंड विल हैव इट ऑन द ऑन द टारगेट ऑन द टारमिक एंड फ्लाइबल एयरक्राफ्ट एंड विल हैव टू वेट एंड इट इज गिव अस ए बिग बूस्ट एंड कैपेबिलिटीज टू इंडियन एयरफोर्स एंड कीप आवर एनिमीज एंड एडवर्सरीज एट बोथ द बॉर्डर्स अवे फ्रॉम अस एंड दो नो बडी विल डेयर टू टेक एनी रिस्क टू द इंडियन एयरफोर्स एज सच दैट ऑलरेडी बिन शोन दैट ऑलरेडी बिन शोन इन टू द ऑफ सिंदूर when our response was less but our capability avionics capability weapon delivery capability accuracy and sustainability and survivability all the aspects we have made it clear and fortunately all this has been developed by in, within the country by our own scientists with the interface of indian engineers and uh, indian air force engineers and indian air force pilots so all the development has been taken or taken over a period has been developed and taken over a period of time with a proper interface between the user and the developer so the result whatever the coming out it is a fantastic product and it will serve indian force for a long time right absolutely you know uh, like you said it's had a long history it's had its ups and downs and uh, with the maiden flight the world is obviously watching what india is doing but i'd also like to understand from you to what extent does the tejas serve as the foundation design and r&d blueprint for india's future indigenous air power marvels and uh, you know considering the fact that warfare is rapidly changing okay i just tell you one thing see what happened we don't have to reinvent the wheel theek hai air form designs are already there in the market engines are there basically the avionics and the weapon system and deliverable how to deliver the platform which can be delivered and mm-hmm. accuracy all has been technological advancement has taken over a period of time this was being done in the other countries say russia and the, uh, america earlier and the france and big europe countries but these are the our scientists only were working in those countries and working for them now these people have started working and we have produced the result desired result and we produced the but the state of art equipments which has been appreciated which has been appreciated by the whole world we read an article given the france french army is very fond of our equipments because our equipments have proved that they are cheaper at the same time very accurate and desired and delivers what we specify what you tell them and the same result is obtained not that we specify something else and the result will be get as something else now with this aircraft this is a multi role aircraft multi role aircraft is all ground support interception recce all the roles it can mother can be switch over that is the requirement of the today even all the aircrafts produced in the in the world these days are multi role we don't have to roll aircraft for the electronic purposes we don't have to air pass only for the ground support mother it has can be interchanged whatever requirement is there aircraft will operate accordingly so that is the very big thing for us and uh, our best part is our manufacture for the spare parts we don't have to depend on others for designs for the bombs we don't have to depend on others in the past we have experienced all these things because you have put aircraft so down for for a short of very very small parts even during uh, i not say some operations so we don't have the armaments it has to get it from france right so now all this problem what you have faced earlier will not face in the future because everything within our country now we may have aircraft for some thousands of crores but if there no armaments the aircraft is just a toy now that situation will not be there at any time it will never come into light time and we will have a strong air force and a strong country as such so that is a major advantage of having our own manufactured aircraft only i hope with this certain span of time will be able to our engineers or hr uh, cover engine product will be able to develop a desired engine for which we are still depending on the others right. and the work is on so uh, even the japan has come forward to suggest certain engines even russia has come forward man uh, i'm sure within a time hl and the other organization which will come up with help of our private uh, sectors also will be able to manufacture an engine desired engine what you get a desired output particularly in the climatic conditions of a tropical climatic condition where the aircraft performance is slightly lesser what there is in the european union or the america or the russia right so absolutely uh, with that i'd like to thank you for joining us uh, on newsx sharing your insights and perspectives with us on that note a short break